Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Bird Brown coming with our spiritual nourishment, our word for today. We are continuing our study in the book of Genesis. We are in currently in chapter 30. If you've been missing these sessions, please go back to my YouTube channel, find them. Listen to them, meditate on them, go and study them because we are growing, changing, and progressing. We are getting this word and being impacted by the word, the principles of the word, so we can impact the world. We are here on purpose and intentional. So just as we exercise our bodies, the Bible tells us about exercising godliness. And so we are exercising in our sit up spiritual impact training, using prayer and scripture Monday through Friday minimum. And so if you have not yet joined the morning prayer, please check out the information underneath this YouTube video. And then you come on here and get your word, get your pen, get your paper, get your highlighter and get your Bible so that you can begin to take notes off of whatever we cover today. We are starting in Genesis 30. We are continuing. We left off in verse 26. And so we're going to open up in prayer and we're going to go right in and see what the Lord is showing us today. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, we come rejoicing. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you for your word, your truth, spiritual nourishment, spiritual bread. We thank you, Lord God, for filling us up as your Holy Spirit is our teacher, pouring into us individually, collectively at our point of need, our level of understanding that we would grow, change, that we would progress, that we would be impacted, that we are vessels and instruments that you can work through. Lord God, Father, that we are impacting those around us. We thank you. We praise, love, and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, we are in Genesis we're in chapter 30, and we are beginning, um, we're really beginning in verse 27, but I'm going to backtrack because I want us to remember that Leah and Rachel are Jacob's wives. He loves Rachel, but Leah was able to first have the first four children while Rachel was barren and unable to have children because the Lord looked at, Rachel, at, at Leah and saw that she was hated. Well, in comparison to Rachel. So she wanted the love of Jacob, but then Rachel wanted children. Each of them wanted what the other had. There was some sibling rivalry going on. So, you know, we can go back and check it out how Rachel then had her handmaiden have children by Jacob and then Leah was then able to have children again and then she had children through her handmaiden and so we can just go back and look but Rachel was finally able to have a son Joseph and this took place in verse 25 so that was her first natural born child by Jacob Jacob loved Rachel Rachel was unable to have children up until this point and so now she has a son she has Jacob and now Jacob I mean she has a son Joseph and now Jacob goes to his uncle Laban and asks him in verse 25 to send him away that he can go get his own place uh, to his own country. And in verse 26, he said, give me my wives and my children for whom I've served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service, which I've done to thee. So remember, he worked 14 years for Rachel. He really was supposed to work seven for her, but his uncle Laban tricked him and gave him uh, Leah instead of Rachel. So he had to work an additional seven years. So now he's been there while they've had children. And now in verse 27, Laban says to him, I pray thee, if I found favor in your eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. So he's acknowledging that he's been blessed because Jacob is there. And this is the type of life that we should live as believers, that wherever we are, that place ought to be blessed because we're there. And I say that not because we're great, but because God is great. And as we are faithful to God and obedient to God, excuse me. Excuse me. As we are faithful and obedient to God, then we should be receiving the blessings of God. The people that we're connected to should be blessed. Our household should be blessed. And when I say blessed, it doesn't always mean, um, you know, people are always looking at money and looking at this and looking at things, right? But the Old Testament is a natural story of spiritual things to come for us as believers. So Jesus talks about us laying up treasure in heaven and not on earth. I'm not saying money and things are a bad thing, but that is not what we're seeking after. We're seeking after eternal life, right relationship with God, to bear spiritual fruit, to be productive and beneficial for the kingdom of God. And so, as we are looking here, we see that Laban at least acknowledges that his blessings, the blessings of his household is because 
Jacob is there and Jacob belongs to God. So he says, listen, you know, I know that I've been blessed since you have been here. And it's been, he says, I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. And so in verse 28, it says, and he said, appoint me thy wages and I will give it. So at this point, he wants Jacob to stay, right? He's saying, I know how hard you worked, how your flocks and herds have grown. Um, how I'm sorry, your flocks and herds have grown under my care. This is what Jacob is telling him. Uh, you know I've been working for you. You know that you've been increased because I've been here. And so in verse 30, um, He's saying, for it was little which thou hast before I came and is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? He said, look, you know, since I've been here, when I came, you didn't have much anything. Since I've been here, it's increased to a multitude. God blessed you since I've been here. But now I want my own household. I want to take care of my own family. I want my own stuff, right? And so then in verse 31 he said what shall I give thee and Jacob said thou shall not give me anything if you will do this thing for me I will again feed and keep thy flock I will pass through all thy flock today removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such shall be my hire so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come from my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straight and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted and everyone that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hand of his sons and he set the set three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks now let's let's check this out now this is what it's telling us in the NLT this is really breaking it down right um Laban is asking him, what wages do you want? And Jacob told him, you know, don't give me anything. Just do this one thing and I'll continue to tend and watch over your flocks. Now he's saying, this is the agreement. This is it. He's saying in verse 32, let me inspect all your flocks. This is Jacob talking to Laban. Let me inspect all your flocks today. Remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled, spotted, along with all the black sheep. Give them Give these to me as my wages. In the future, when you check on the animals you have given me as my wages, you'll see that I have been honest. If you find in my flock any goats without speckles or spots or any sheep that are not black, you'll know that I've stolen from you. And so Laban agrees and says, all right, it'll be as you said. But it says in verse 35 that Laban that very day went out and he removed all the male goats that were streaked and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted and had white patches, all the black sheep. And he placed them in care of his own sons. Then they took him on a three days journey from where Jacob was. And meanwhile, Jacob stayed in care for the rest of Laban's flock. So Laban makes this agreement. Basically, all of Jacob's uh, wages were going to be the spot and the speckled and the black sheep, right? But but Laban goes out and takes all of them and removes them away from Jacob so Jacob doesn't have them. So now, what happens? What takes place? Now remember, you know, we talk about uh, Jacob and oftentimes people say, you know, they call him that deceiver that, you know, that tricked his brother Esau, but now he's fighting with one that's like him, Laban. Laban has deceived him already when he first worked for his daughter Rachel and instead... Laban gave him Leah. So now um, he's already deceived Jacob so that Jacob had to work twice as long for his wife, Rachel. However, they're, they're the same. <laughs> they got the same blood. And so now, you know, he's telling them, Jacob's telling Laban, I want to go. I want to take care of my family. And so they make an agreement that uh, Jacob's wages so he can finally go is going to be the spot and the speckle you know, and the, and the brown or black, you know, the, you know, sheep and goat. And, and, and so 
So now Laban tricks him again. He takes all of the spotted, the speckled and the and the brown uh, sheep and, and he has his sons take him away. So now what's going to happen? Um, now what happens when we look down in um, verse 37? Let's go down to verse 37 because they they are the same blood. And so they, but, but now it tells us in verse 37, Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and, and uh, peeled white strakes in them and made the white appear, which was in the rods. And he set the rods, which he had peeled. Before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle, ring straight, speckled, and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straight and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in so that the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and cattle and camels and asses. Now listen, I'm gonna break this down for you. In verse 37, this is the NLT. Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar um, almond and plane trees and peeled off strips of bark, making white streaks upon them. Then he placed these peeled branches in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. Stay with me. For that was where they mated. And when they mated in front of the white streaked branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated these lambs from Laban's flock and at mating time, he turned the flock to face Laban's animals that were streaked or black. This is how he built his own flock instead of increasing Laban. Whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob would place the peel branches in the watering troughs in front of them. Then they would mate in front of the branches but he didn't do this with the weaker one. So the weaker lamb belonged to Laban and the stronger ones, Jacob. So Jacob, when the stronger ones were ready to mate, he put them in front of those peeled branches. They made it and then they would give birth to the spotted and the, and the streak. So he was building stronger um, flock for himself when the weaker ones were ready. He didn't turn them that way. He didn't do that with them. So the weaker ones were becoming... Laban's, the stronger ones were having spotted and speckled um, offspring and they were becoming Jacob. So Jacob was doing this without stealing from Laban, without, but he was, when you read, when we read in the next chapter, what we're really going to find out is God revealed this to him. God showed him this in a dream. And so now he is able to build so that Laban is still going to see that God is with Jacob. He is building his own wages through um, revelation that God has given him as he's doing this with these branches and they're streaked. And so he's, so they're, they're, they're mating face in these branches and they're giving birth to strong streaked and speckled because remember the agreement was the spotted, the speckled, the brown were going to be Jacob's wages. So he's building his wages so he can prepare to leave and take care of his family. But this is what happens is that it says as a result, Jacob became very wealthy with large flocks of sheep and goat, female and male servants, and many camels and donkeys. But I want us to look at the principles here because a God before you who can be against you. When God begins to bless you and reveal to you and guide you and lead you, you know, it's the word says, if we acknowledge him in all our ways, he'll direct our path. And as we realize if God be for us, who can be against us? And so we recognize that favor comes from God and not from people. And it's not that we have to deceive anybody, trick anybody. Oftentimes people begin to trust in people and think, well, if I do this or if I trick them or if I do it this way, and they come up with their own plot schemes and plans. But when you've heard from God and do things, 
things the way God says. It doesn't even have to make sense. It doesn't even have to, you know, be a thing in the natural. It could be crazy to somebody else. But if you listen for what God is showing you, when you do what God is telling you to do and you do it the way he tells you to do it, um, God will reveal to you and do things in your life that everybody will know God did it. Already Laban knew that it was the Lord that was blessing his household just because Jacob was there. But now God is still going to get all the glory because God is showing him a way that doesn't make sense because he knows that Laban is trying to trick Jacob. He is guiding and leading Jacob into what to do. Now, oftentimes we miss what God is doing supernaturally because we don't do what God shows us because it doesn't make sense to us. So we try to come up with things that are not lawful, that don't line up with his word, things that are schemes and plots and plans that are ungodly and then we cause issues to come about we cause ourselves to be stuck in situations unable to move forward but when we do it God's way and so now Jacob is not doing anything that's illegal anything that's wrong anything that's ungodly he's simply walking in the wisdom of God and so this is what um what I want us to remember for a memory verse is Jeremiah 33 and 3 because what it says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, this is a principle that we need to have. And it says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. It's things that we don't know that God is able to show us. He's able to reveal to us things that don't make sense, things that we didn't know, things we couldn't see, things we couldn't do. Because when you call on the Lord and he guides you and leads you and answers you. He gives us revelation knowledge. He gives us clarity, spiritual discernment. He gives us wisdom. He gives us not the wisdom of the world, but the wisdom of God, instruction, direction, correction, and guidance. And it causes us to move forward. It causes us to bear fruit. It causes us to be beneficial to the kingdom. We have to walk in the steps that God has ordered and ordained. And so this caused Jacob to increase exceedingly. Stop trying to pay people back because what he could have done was recognize that Laban had tried to trick him because he was already taking care of things. He had to know that Laban had taken away the spotted and the streaked and the, and the speckled and the brown. He had to know that they were missing. And again, just like when Laban tricked him with Leah, Jacob could have tried to pay him back. He could have tried to do something underhanded. He could have tried to do something deceptive. He could have broke out in a fight. He could have went off on him. But instead, he walked in the wisdom of God. He was a hard worker. He did whatever it took for him to get whatever it is that he desired and whatever it is that he needed. And so these are principles that we need to follow because we don't have to try to pay people back. We don't have to fight. All we have to do is recognize if God be for us, who can be against us. We have to recognize that all we have to do is allow ourselves to submit to God, right? And when we submit to him, God blesses us through in our obedience. And so also, we want to remember not just Jeremiah 33 and 3, but also Romans 8 and 31 that reminds us if God be for us, who can be against us? But look at the whole verse, but that's in the verse, right? And so our goal then, is that God be for us. What does that entail? It, 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 it requires us to be submitted to God, obedient to God, listening to God, inquiring of God, walking with God, desiring the things of God. Because the Bible says if we delight ourselves in him, that he will give us the desires of our heart. So this is the goal. This is the principle of the day, is to Walk in such a manner that God is for us. Remember Laban's house was blessed because the, because the Lord blessed Laban's house because Jacob was there. Jacob was in the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. So listen, when we fight for our birthright, when we are surrendered to God, when we want what God has for us enough that we do whatever it takes and we're submitted to him and committed to his ways, God blesses that. And so that is the goal, not to overcome people, not to fight people back, not to be better than other people, just simply to be in the will of God. And if God be for us, who can be against us? God will provide for us. The Bible says that God will perfect that which concerns you. The Bible tells us that all things work together for good of those who love God 
and are the called according to his purpose. Over and over, the goal is to be in right standing with God. So today we examine ourselves. What area of our life is it that may not be in right standing with God, where we're not lining up with his will, his words of wisdom, his instruction, his direction, or his correction? What area of our life do we need to surrender to God and submit to him? That he would be for us and not against us. So that we know if God be for us, who can be against us? It's the favor of God. We don't have to fear man and what he will do to us if we're walking in right standing with God. He's perfecting the things that concern us. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper according to his word. And so even though Laban tried to trick him, no weapon formed against Jacob would prosper. And so this is the inheritance for the people of God. And so grab hold of that. Go back and meditate on these verses of scripture that we went over today. Get the principles. Examine yourself. See if there's some area of your life that you need to yield to God. Submit to him so, in your right, so that you are in right standing with him. That you know wherever you go in your job, in your business, in your church, in your community, your neighborhood, in your home. It's blessed by the Lord because you're there. Are we walking in a way that we could say that? That wherever we go, we expect it to be blessed because we're there. We can't say that if we're not walking in right standing with God because the blessings come from him. And he blesses those that are walking with him. He's perfecting that which concerns us because we're there. Because we are um, doing what stands up, stands what is lined up with his word. Obedience is where the blessings come from. So we're going to close out in prayer. We know if we're living raggedy, if we're not lined up with his word, we can't expect God to bless where we're at. We can't expect our household to be in order, our job to be blessed, our walk, our community, our neighborhood. We can't expect our family to be blessed because we're walking, you know, if we're walking contrary to God's will, the blessings and the obedience. You walk in his principles and you receive his promises. Father, in the name of Jesus, we need you. And Father, we're calling on you that you would perfect us, purge us, prune us, cleanse us, purify our hearts, reveal to us any wickedness, Lord God, anything within us that's not of you. Help us to turn away from any forms of idolatry, spiritual adultery, corrupt companions, evil communications. Lord God, ungodly motives or thoughts or deeds. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be holy because you're holy, to be submitted to you, resist the devil, and he flees. And so, Father, thank you for continuing the good work you began in us until Christ Jesus. We love you. We honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. I'll see you on the next sit-ups. Don't forget to share this video. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want notifications when I upload videos. God bless you.